Thank you for doing this. Let me, let me dive in here. We live in a pretty diverse uh, relational landscape right mm -hmm. now. And how do people define and navigate commitment? Um, especially when there seems to be, and this may be an overstatement, but I'm going to overstate the point to make the point, an attack on monogamy. How do we help people define and navigate commitment, especially in cultures that sort of like throw their noses up at monogamy? Yeah, I almost feel like there's been a side up, you know, against monogamy uh, that's been gradual and insidious over, gosh, a couple of decades now. But mm -hmm. I don't, it's like, there's so many things to, to say about this, but ultimately I feel people are confused about what is, what is exclusive, you know, what is an exclusive relationship? What is a committed relationship? What do you need in order to be married? Because people are just sort of making up their own rules. Everything is so subjective and monogamy is seen as constrictive, you know, limiting. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have um, sort of internalized this messaging that they're getting from a lot of different sources out there in society and culture. But one of the main things I see as the problem is sort of the, the evolution of the dating world, right? Like, just if you look up the timeline of how things started, like pre 20th century, it was all courtship, right? And arranged, you know, sort of informal arrangements, not like arranged marriages, but people would know people and there would be matchmaking and people would be courted as a, a dependent of their parents, right? And then they would yeah. end up in a, ma a marriage situation. And then obviously in the you know, early 20th century, like things started to shift a little bit with the influence of like Hollywood and just the cities and urbanism. And I think after the sexual revolution in the 60s and 70s, obviously things took a, a much bigger jump towards more casual dating, sexual freedom and equality between the genders, it obviously is a good thing, but there were some downsides to it too yeah. that we've seen the effects of. And then like in the later uh, 20th century and now and since in the 21st century, this technological sort of advancement with dating apps, but I really, do not recommend people using dating apps because it makes it a lot more difficult to make genuine connections with people, meaningful marriage minded connections, because the premise of dating apps em embeds the idea that you're supposed to be casually dating multiple people at one time and you don't have to talk about it. Like you don't have to disclose that you're talking to all these other people. That's how they're built. That's their, you know, their business model is to encourage people to have multiple people on a Rolodex, you know, like kind of spinning plates, as they call it. A lot of people see it that way. So I'm curious as to what you think about dating apps and just if you feel like that's been a significant factor and people sort yeah. of <laughs> being side off out of monogamy. Well, I, I, I agree with you. Um, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't have a, a bone to pick with dating apps per se, right? I, I understand what they're trying to do. But what, what, I, what I think happens with those, it is a symptom of our culture that we have divorced commitment and connection. Mm -hmm. You know, older generations value commitment. They'd stay married for 50 years and hate each other, um, but they didn't know how to foster connection. I think our generation values connection, but we don't know how to commit to each yeah. other. And so what the dating apps do is they allow for all, all of this connection, 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 and the thrill momentarily without the, the anchoring of stability, of safety that is needed for healthy attachment, that's needed for healthy uh, relationships. And so I think you need both. Yeah. You, you, if you want to have good relationships, and I think that's in, in every, you know, there's a lot of Greek words for love. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that those Greek words define love. I think they contextualize it. So my love for a friend, for example, might be different than my love for my wife um, or is different from my love for my wife. There's similarities there. But I think like, you know, Barbara Fredrickson, a researcher out of uh, North Carolina, has done some amazing research on love. And she says love is defined in three ways. It's when we create small moments of connection or micro moments of connection that foster shared positive emotions. And what that connection does is it starts to create a synchrony of biochemistry and behavior, oxytocin, vasopressin. You start to, you know, couples start to sound alike, smell alike, you know, it's like all these things. And then as there's a synchrony of those things, there's a, you foster belief of mutual care. I am for you and you are for me. And then that, that promotes the desire to then continue to create those micro connections. But in cultures, where it's, we're all about connection, I think it sabotages monogamy because it sabotages safety, commitment. Mm -hmm. um, so I, there's a marriage there, no pun intended, <laughs> bet between the commitment and the and the connection piece that I think is really important that gets lost sometimes in those in those dating apps and what we mm -hmm. do things. Talk, talk on any of that. Yeah, no, I, I think that, um, you know, it's this immediate gratification, the sort of seeking pleasure the 
a lot of people are, are putting more importance on seeking pleasure and they're not they're not tolerant of discomfort, right? Yeah. They away from anything difficult that comes up in a relationship and there's that, you know, to having too many options, FOMO, fear of missing out. So all of those um, sort of more modern or new uh, current psychological challenges that we're seeing people face, I think it's it's really steering them towards these short-term relationships. Yeah. What do you what do you think about I cuz I think that's that is the perfect soil for personality factors. Mm -hmm. If I don't wait around long enough in a relationship to see myself in the mirror of that relationship, to see the, the unhealthy parts of me, how I contribute to the problems in the relationship. Just being able to write people off and just be me and my, it, it seems to foster you know, these defense mechanisms of idealization and devaluation, splitting, you're either all good or you're all bad. I'm just going to write you off because there's nothing wrong. Yeah. I think it can foster that kind of stuff in our culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think you're right. There are, the mental health crisis is definitely, I think, shot up a lot since all of these oh, yeah. have, you know, have been planted in the soil. So uh, yeah. it, I'm not in the mental health field anymore, but from what you're seeing, are you seeing a lot more problems? Um, than maybe 20 years ago? What I'm seeing is a lot of relational induced anxiety because everybody wants the connection, but they live with the fear of being abandoned. Mm -hmm. And because they don't know how to ask the right questions, they don't know how to do this well and value commitment and connection. It's one of the reasons I was like, man, I gotta talk with Taylor. We, we've got to get into some of this conversation. So, all right, n n new mm -hmm. question, building on that. What are some, so let, let's keep picking on the online stuff for just a minute. What are some effective ways to navigate like online dating um, and social media platforms that actually create meaningful connection. So, you know, all of that's here, it's present. We know commitment and connection are important, but how do we foster meaningful connection and ensure the best results in this sort of, uh, you know, this digital dating world? Well, the whole point of my vetting system is that you are clarifying what matters most to you, what you stand for, what your values are, who you are, who you want to be, the type of life that you are striving to create and build, and the legacy that's going to come on the, the, the other side of that, right? Yeah, so I love it. All of that stuff, your goals, your needs, your boundaries, and just making sure that that you're you're in a place where you are selecting someone intentionally. Because I think that, I mean, we're talking about online, but just generally, I think that the, the problem with the divorce rate and marriage success, the limitations there, is that people are just marrying too frivolously. So I actually want to reduce, one of my, my in a way, a roundabout way, I'm just saying this because it's kind of ironic when you hear it, I want to reduce the incidence of marriage because I want the right people to marry. Yeah. And in doing so, the divorce rate is going to go down. Yes. So preserve and sanctify marriage as a lifelong commitment because the right people are marrying. Yes. Man, I love it. So even, even from my own faith background, that resonates with me. Mm -hmm. um, it's why the, the pre-engagement, pre it's almost as if you're doing um, not premarital work, but even pre-engagement yeah. work. And, and it, it doesn't start relationally. It starts with building a relationship with yourself. 100%. That's self-leadership piece. Uh, online. So, so, yeah, so the online piece. So right, I love I, I've got tons of thoughts and questions about that, but we'll, we'll keep going and maybe come back. To yes, that. we should. Um, I want to close this loop for you, though. So online, people are hopefully starting to realize that social media and not even just Instagram or the other competitive platforms, but just generally any kind of community that you use online. For instance, I had a client that is learning languages. So he's got a language app community, for instance, right? So whatever communities you're online in are becoming our organic but digital life neighborhood and community, right? The way we meet people and how we make connections. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to, to use them in an appropriate way. So not just being frivolous and passive or unconscious about how we present ourselves or how we make connections, but actually using it in a way that you are, you're almost leveraging the algorithm because the al algorithms are very smart <laughs> and they will put people together. It's almost like a sort of mating, right? It will help you assortively with people or connect with people who share your values and your interests and your lifestyle and all of that stuff. So if you can start to um, be more transparent and authentic and less about, you know, just sort of showing what you think other people want to see yeah. to attract everybody. Because yeah. a lot of people are qual quantity over quality. And this idea is about being more, more true to yourself and focusing on attracting fewer people, but the quality people that share and align with you.